Hey there, it is that time of year again. It is slow cooker season. So today I'm going to be showing you six new dump and go slow cooker recipes. And you just wait, these are not your typical boring type of slow cooker meals. These meals are bursting with flavor. They're so easy to make and your entire family will just love them. So I hope you enjoy it and let's go get started. I'm so excited to start today off with this amazing chicken tortilla soup. To my slow cooker, I added in three large chicken breasts. Next, you're going to toss in one onion that you diced, and then a 15 ounce can of corn. My corn is undrained. Also, if you wanna add black beans or pinto beans to this recipe, you certainly can. I just didn't today. Then I added in a 15 ounce can of chicken broth, 10 ounce can of rotel, 10 ounce can of enchilada, sauce and then one cup of water for the seasonings I added in two tablespoons of taco seasoning a teaspoon of chili powder then a teaspoon of salt and a half a teaspoon of pepper go ahead and give this a little stir put the lid on top and let this cook on low for about seven hours Now that we have our chicken breasts completely cooked through, I remove them to a separate plate and I am just going to shred the chicken breasts up on that plate. Once our chicken is completely shredded, I am going to add it back into the slow cooker and then I am going to give it a really good stir to incorporate the chicken in with the rest of the ingredients and then it's time to serve. My house was smelling so, so phenomenal at this point. We like to top our bowls of tortilla soup with a little bit of cheese, tortilla strips, cilantro, and fresh lime juice, but top your bowls of soup with anything that you love. Now we're making this marry me chicken and it is so unbelievably good. To begin, we're going to start on the cornstarch and chicken broth mixture. So to this bowl, I tossed in a cup and a half of chicken broth. Now I'm going to slowly whisk in three tablespoons of cornstarch. The reason why you wanna whisk that cornstarch in slowly is just to ensure that there are no clumps in your chicken broth. You want your chicken broth to be nice and smooth. And this mixture is going to help thicken up up. This recipe is going to turn out so amazing. You got to trust me. I'm going to pour this mixture now that it is smooth into my slow cooker. Next, you're going to toss in one cup of heavy cream followed by a tablespoon of minced garlic. Then for the seasonings, a half a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of pepper, one teaspoon of Italian seasoning, then a half a teaspoon of paprika and you are going to give this a really good whisk. Now that it's super well combined, I am going to toss in my two large chicken breasts. You'll top the chicken breasts with about two tablespoons of butter. I did slice the butter into super small pieces. And then over the top of everything, I added my third a cup of sun-dried tomatoes. I put the lid on top and I cooked this on low for about six to seven hours or until my chicken was cooked through. But now that we have the chicken cooked through, it is ready to shred. As you see, I'm just shredding it with a back of my fork it is that tender and then I served it up I served ours over pasta noodles but you could serve yours over rice cauliflower rice mashed potatoes anything you like this has amazing great flavor my husband could seriously eat plates and plates of this and not get tired of it it really is that good now we're making this beef stew and this is the only beef stew recipe you will ever need just because it is that good. To begin, I sliced my carrots, I diced my onion, and then I peeled and diced my four medium sized russet potatoes. I'll set these veggies to the side. We're going to sear our beef stew meat right now. So over to the pan on my stove, I tossed in two tablespoons of olive oil. Once the oil was hot, I grabbed my beef stew meat and I seasoned it with a 
little dash of salt and pepper. Then I added it right into my pan. You are going to sear this on high heat for about three minutes. This is going to make your beef stew meat nice and kind of like caramelized on the outside. It is going to give it so much great flavor and it's going to taste super rich and delicious. But if you don't have time to sear your meat, I totally understand. You could skip that step and this will still turn out so, so delicious. I added that beef stew meat right into my slow cooker along with a tablespoon of minced garlic, two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. Then for the beef broth, I tossed in about three and a half cups of that. Next, you're going to add in the veggies that we cut up earlier. And then you are going to add in eight ounces of tomato sauce, which is just kind of like half of this can. I do wanna let you know whenever I don't use a full can of something, I like to put the remaining amount of stuff that's in the can in a Ziploc bag and then I just freeze it. But for the seasonings, I added in two bay leaves, a teaspoon of paprika, two teaspoons of dried thyme, two teaspoons of dried rosemary, then a teaspoon of salt and a half a teaspoon of pepper. I gave this a really good stir. You're going to put the lid on top and cook this on low for about seven to eight hours. Once the cooking time was up, I removed about three-fourths cup of the broth in the slow cooker and I added it to this bowl along with a fourth a cup of flour and I'm going to whisk this all together until it's smooth. This is going to help thicken our stew up. So now I'm going to add it right into our beef stew and I am going to just kind of whisk it in there and then I'm going to let this continue to cook for an additional 20 minutes and like I said, this will really thicken the stew up. After the 20 minutes of cooking, this was ready to serve. So now I'm just going to remove the two bay leaves because nobody wants to accidentally eat a bay leaf. And then I placed it into my soup bowls and then I served it. We like to sprinkle ours with a little bit of black pepper and salt on the top. This has amazing, rich, bold flavor. That beef stew meat is like fall apart tender. I wish I showed you that part, but this is amazing. You definitely need to try this recipe this fall and winter. I'm so excited to share these chicken tacos with you because this recipe only calls for three ingredients. So the first ingredient, you'll need about three large chicken breasts. Next, you'll need about three tablespoons of taco seasoning. And then last, 16 ounces of tomato salsa. You could use any type of salsa you like or have on hand. Go ahead and put the lid on top and cook this on low for six to seven hours. It seriously cannot get any easier than this. I love this recipe so much. But now that our cooking time is up, I'm just shredding that chicken with the back of my fork. It is just oh so tender. And then I placed some of that chicken in my tortillas. I'm just using the little taco sized tortillas and I did crisp them up on the stove just before I put the chicken in them. And I'm also topping them with a little bit of tomatoes, cheese, and sour cream. But of course you could just top your tacos with anything that you love. These tacos are so amazingly easy to throw together. You could serve this chicken mixture in tacos, burritos, quesadillas. You could also meal prep it for the week or you could even stick it in the freezer for a quick freezer meal in the future. I know this is a bold statement, but this slow cooker baked ziti might be one of my all-time favorite pasta recipes ever. To the pan on my stove, I added one pound of sausage. I'm breaking that sausage up and I'm going to cook it through. Once my sausage is completely cooked through, I'll just remove any excess grease in the pan. And if you know me, you know this is my all-time favorite way of removing any grease in the pan. I just wiggle a paper towel around in there with my spatula until it is gone. It works magically. But now I'm going to add this cooked sausage over into my slow cooker. You're also going to be tossing in a 28 ounce can of Italian style petite diced tomatoes, followed by one onion that you diced. And then you're also going to be adding in a tablespoon of minced garlic and two and a half cups of chicken broth. And then for the seasonings, add in a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of pepper, then one teaspoon of dried basil and give this a stir.
I put the lid on top and then I thought to myself, oh man, I totally forgot to add in the marinara sauce. The marinara sauce was hiding under a bag on my countertop, so I just added in 24 ounces of marinara sauce. I gave it one last stir. I put the lid on top and I cooked this on low for about seven hours. After seven hours of cooking, I removed the lid and I am going to give this another stir. Now I'm going to toss in about 13 ounces of ziti pasta. My favorite pasta in the slow cooker is ziti pasta. I just think it cooks the best and it doesn't have that slow cooker pasta taste if you know what I'm talking about. But I'm going to let this cook on high now for an additional 16 to 25 minutes. I just checked it every five minutes until my pasta was tender. But now that my pasta is to the tenderness that I like it to be, I am going to sprinkle about a cup of mozzarella cheese on top. I let the cheese melt and then I served it up. Like I said previously, this has to be one of my all-time favorite pasta recipes. That ziti pasta has the perfect consistency. This is nice and saucy. It has bold flavor. And then I did serve this with a side salad with spring mix, tomatoes, cheese, and croutons. And then I used Italian dressing for the dressing. This meal was 10 out of 10. Now we're getting started on this sweet garlic pork tenderloin to the pot on my stove. We're going to be starting on the sauce first. I added a cup and a half of honey followed by three fourths cup of low sodium soy sauce, three fourths cup of ketchup, a tablespoon of minced garlic, and lastly, two tablespoons of yellow mustard. You're going to bring this mixture up to a simmer and stir it occasionally for about 10 minutes and let this sauce thicken. Now that my sauce looks like this and has slightly thickened, I'll go ahead and set this to the side. Moving over to my slow cooker, I'll add in my two and a half pounds of pork tenderloin. Over the top of the pork tenderloin, pour the sauce, and then you are going to place the lid on the slow cooker and cook this on low for about six to seven hours. My favorite way of eating this is definitely with rice. So once it was almost finished cooking in the slow cooker, I started on my rice and we're going to be cooking the rice in the instant pot just because it's so perfect in the instant pot. I added my two cups of rinsed jasmine rice, a tablespoon of olive oil and two and a half cups of water. I gave this a stir, I put the lid on top and then all you have to do is press the rice button. It's super simple to cook rice in the instant pot. Rice is probably Probably my favorite thing to cook in the instant pot but now that our pork has finished cooking I'm shredding it up I'm using my electric hand mixer to shred it just to make everything super duper simple I served this over our instant pot white rice with steamed broccoli on the side and I did sprinkle some sesame seeds over everything but this pork has so much rich amazing flavor you are going to be wanting to make this over and over again just like me. I have plenty more slow cooker videos like this on my channel so make sure you're subscribed down below the video so you don't miss any more in the future. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.